I was on my son's technology committee at his school. And if you've ever been in a school, you know that there's some new computers there, there's some really old ones, and managing those is really difficult. And usually there's not even somebody there who really understands how to keep it all running. Well, Neverware has a solution to that. It's a hardware box that goes in and lets you uh, keep your old computers running with the modern stuff. Who are you? My name is Jonathan Hefter. I'm the founder of Neverware, and we are developing the Neverware Juice Box, a server that you stick into a school, and suddenly all the old computers in the building go really fast with the latest operating systems and never need to be replaced again. Yeah, I've seen this a couple of weeks ago when I was here. At the, we're at the General Assembly, first of all. Tell, tell me about this space because there's people walking around and it's noisy and everything like that. So General Assembly is kind of like the idea labs of you know, modern day New York, Silicon Alley. Uh, tons of ideas, some of them are still a kernel of a thought, uh, and some of them are full-fledged revenue generating companies. But I think the, the most unique aspect is the social. Uh, you have a real life space where people are just kind of hacking away, make, turning ideas into realities, and they have the, camarader the camaraderie and the, the abilities to share with each other as they're going through this experience. Uh, I wish I had found this when I was starting out. So you're an interesting guy because you're, you're a hardcore technologist. Now, some of these guys are like building little social networks and little fun things. But there's not too much technology, hardcore technology. In there. But tell me a little bit about what you're building and why you're building it. So technology for me is simply a means to an end. And the end needs to be a clear value proposition. Uh, when judging an idea, the first thing I'm going to ask myself is why is anybody going to care? Um, that being said, you know, once uh, using technology, we're often able to identify these great inefficiencies. So in the case of what I'm doing right now, I realized, hey, we're replacing you know, hundreds of computers in schools a year when each computer is only using a fraction of its computing power. Why not put one powerful computer in the middle of that and have all the old computers just use that power. Now, nobody ever told me that I was just reinventing mainframe computing for the modern day, but uh, I guess it was just before my time. So you're building a hardware box that's building virtualized instances on it, basically, and you're exactly. shoving those instances like Windows or Macintosh out to the old computers. Exactly. I mean, we've got tons of virtual desktop technology already being used in banks and in Fortune 500 companies, but these companies are largely building um, these toolboxes for system integrators to use. We're taking the Dropbox approach, which is take a well-known enterprise uh, stack, completely productize it, and make it really useful to people. Yeah. And it Education's a unique place. I know that because I was on my son's technology committee, and there's usually not as many IT people for per user as in a company, right? In a company, there's usually an IT person for every 16 employees. In a school, you might have one, one girl or one guy who's keeping up all the computers for hundreds, if not maybe even thousands of people. So your thing has to be dead simple when it goes in, right? They, you put it in and it works. Exactly. Yeah. Simplicity is key because I don't know if it's going to be a Citibank veteran or you know, the extra science teacher who's going to be managing the network. That being said, a great part of what the IT person does in the school is just running around putting out fires. So if I can remove the need for the kind of constant nonstop maintenance, it frees them up to do what IT people you know, want to do, which is continue to build and improve the information experience in the school. Yeah. So if there's an old, let's say a Pentium style computer at a school, what do they put on that? And, and what do they have to buy from you to make it work with Windows 7? So they're getting, they're signing up for service, uh, for Neverware service. Just like the cable company, they'll get the juice box. They'll take the juice box, they'll put it on their network. And then they just go to all their old computers and they tell it, instead of booting from the hard drive, I want you to boot from the juice box. Okay. 
and then you know, as you were saying before about making it dead simple, the juice box will take over from there and, and handle everything. So what's loading on what's loading on the local computers? And is it a version of Linux with a virtual stack or something? What, tell what's, me a what's, what's loading on the computer is actually give me your secret sauce. <laughs> the secret sauce is essentially what they're doing everywhere else. All you're doing is you're loading a small client onto the computer whose sole purpose is just to get the machine up and get it to connect to a virtual machine. Uh, that being said, the whole point is to make an integrated and seamless experience. Yeah. Does it work with uh, Macs and Windows machines or just Windows machines? It can work with any machine, but right now what we're, uh, what we're focusing on is providing something that's going to be the most use of the most use to people. So we're going to start out with Windows and then we're going to transition over to other operating systems. Okay. And how much does this service cost for a, you know, a school that has maybe 200 computers and how do you price it out? So we're still pricing it out. Right now it looks like we're going to go on a, uh, on a service basis. People will pay a monthly cost per, per desktop. Okay. Um, the final prices are not done, but it is significantly cheaper than buying a new PC. And that's just the cost of the service compared to the cost of the PC hardware before you even consider that you no longer have to manage a large uh, network of desktops. Yeah. Most, most of the startups here at the General Assembly are software-based completely. You know, cloud, their cloud uh, instances are running on Rackspace Cloud or Amazon. They don't have any hardware. What's it like being a hardware guy in an environment like this? Because you have to actually build a box that gets delivered out to the network. I mean, there's a good reason that m many people aren't doing hardware. Um, it's difficult, it's expensive, it's cumbersome. And I think that there's a big advantage to going into the places that other people might be afraid to because you're going to encounter less resistance and there's probably a lot more room to innovate because far fewer people are thinking about that. Yeah. Tell me uh, just a little bit about the fundamentals of the company. How are you funded? Sure. Uh, so funding is still uh, undisclosed. Okay. Um, but we are... Uh, very fortunate to be working with some fantastic partners. Uh, we're very excited about that, as well as some great partners in the education system. And we look forward to getting our first uh, production grade pilot out um, probably around the, uh, the new year. Very cool. So where should educators learn more about you and get in touch with you and see your system? Educators um, or engineers uh, can both find us at neverware.com. Our Twitter, our Twitter handle is at Neverware, and that's Neverware as in hardware, software, Neverware. Um, and we definitely look forward to hearing from all of them. Very cool. Well, thanks for uh, showing it to me, and uh, really appreciate what you're doing for education. Pleasure speaking with you.